There we go. Good morning, folks. So, today, I'm going to be working on this. This is a, uh, we live in rural Ontario, Canada, and, uh, well, as you know, Canada is the third world country, so the power here is not always that reliable. So, this here is my battery box, and it's ever-evolving. So, this guy here has a 2,000-watt pure sine wave inverter on top of it, and... It's just got a little display. The disconnect's not even hooked up at the moment, but yeah, over time I'm going to add bigger batteries to it as I get more money. And of course, I want to add this 1300 watt um, power converter, which will keep the batteries always topped up. And in that case, I'll just get rid of the relay that's in it. And um, I will run the entire thing off of a. Uh, it'll be an online UPS at that point where everything's just always running off the inverter. So, uh, <clears throat> inside here right now, we have got the charger. That's just a little tiny 15 amp charger just to make sure that the batteries are always topped up. Of course, our cells are fused. Um, we've got a couple of interstate cells here. So, and then we've got a, a filter plug there. It's just a uh, Molex plug for computer, basically. On the back there just makes it easy to manage. Now, one of the things I'm going to change uh, from the diagram that you guys have seen is that... Uh, Instead of using that for the control circuitry as well, I'm adding this little mean well here to 5 amp. That will just be for the control circuitry. And then the next project after all this is done is literally replace this with that monster right there. She's beautiful. I mean, like, that is a, a beautiful little piece of tech. So... That will make sure that all of our computers and stuff never turn off. Here's a little um, control module for that guy that sits on my desk. And right now what we do is we've got a couple of uh, power bars, one at each one of our computers that uh, we just plug our UPSs into when the power fails. But, uh, yep, this is going to be a nice upgrade. We're going to change over from, uh, well, we're just slowly upgrading it. I also intend to get... Uh, larger batteries for this thing because I, these right now we're running 160 amp hour which is not amazing but it's good enough for our computers and that because we just turn off stuff we don't need uh, I intend to actually replace these with some larger deep cycle cells alright and by the way this part of the video was filmed on my phone which I'm hoping to do all my videos with soon because apparently the video on this is supposed to be far better than that of my camcorder but we will soon see here we go on to the next part Okay, let me uh, let me zoom this thing in just a, uh, let me zoom you in just a little bit. Uh, how do I zoom? Um, this thing is zooming in. No, nope, that won't do it. Uh, edit. Can you not? Oh, there we go. Okay. Here we go. All right, so this is the part of the video where I show you kind of what I'm doing. Get you an idea of what's going on here. So what I've done is I've got two separate plugs here, one for each circuit that's going to a computer. This one's going to go to Mitch's computer. This one to mine. Um, here's your 20 amp fuses on there. I'm fusing them at 20 amp because the circuit is capable of 20 amp, although I'll probably end up putting 15 amp fuses in here because these duplex receptacles are only rated for 15 amps. <sighs> okay, so let's start from the bottom up. <clears throat> uh, I have a uh, 20 amp circuit that's going to be feeding this whole thing. Um, so what we're going to have here, I've actually changed it up slightly too for now. Uh, I am, as I mentioned, adding a much beefier power supply into this thing at some point. As soon as I fix that power supply, this will be a video for another day. Um, and then in that case, I'll have this diode here. So we'll go by this diagram first and I'll explain the differences. So we got all our 20 amp cable coming into the unit, okay? <clears throat> so that's fused at 20 amps as well, as is the breaker. Um, that goes in to feed the PSU, which charges the batteries, which feed the inverter, which feeds the relay, which feeds everything else. Um, so essentially, as long as the power is active, this relay will be closed to normally open, which means that as long as there is power going to the relay, um, 
the magnet will stay active and it will uh, keep the normally open contacts closed, which means that uh, as long as there's AC power coming into the unit, into the house, that um, that power will go out through the common on here, out to the devices, to the two receptacles here, okay? Now, as soon as the power goes off, then this relay slams back into normally closed. That's its resting state is normally closed. Once it's in normally closed, it will be drawing power from this inverter to feed these plugs. And hopefully this relay moves fast enough that I can do it before the computers kick off. Now the relay that I'm using is actually rated for 30 amps. It's uh, double pull, double throw, and it's actually out of a UPS. So it should be fairly fast. And if it is fast enough, the computers won't even notice that uh, the power blinked and this thing essentially becomes a giant friggin' UPS. That's that's kind of what I'm shooting for. Okay, now a further breakdown of this is here's your relay, here's your receptacles, power inverter, fuses everywhere, batteries, and control module. Um, again, this thing is ever evolving with me. I'm constantly changing it, constantly improving it, constantly upgrading it. This is the next big upgrade is to make it into a proper UPS. So power comes in now, feeds the PSU. In this case, I've got a 15 amp battery charger charging these batteries at all times. And then um, these batteries are, of course, fused right here to the PSU. Uh, the batteries then go up through a 175 amp little fuse, which feeds this 2000 uh, watt inverter. Um, 175 amp works out pretty good. Actually, if I pop a calculator up here, let me see here. Uh, I want the calculator up. I don't want this thing up. Okay, I'll have to edit that. Okay, so back to my picture screen. And then can I bring the calculator over top of No, I can't. You bastard. Okay, so here we go. So we got 175 times what's the lowest voltage I'm going to be using will be about 12. So that's 2100 watts. That's, that's not bad, okay? And back to the program. Uh, zoom, you bastard. There we go. Okay, so that ensures that if there's a short or whatever, it makes sure that uh, you don't have a runaway because these batteries here, they, will, they won't stop. They're indiscriminate. They're dumb. If you short them, they will catch fire. They will burn the wires that are connected to them. Okay, so right here is a little blocking diode, which I, I will be using on the later iteration. What that will allow is for the charger to charge the batteries, but for the battery power not to roll back past the diode. What that will enable me to do is to run the relay off the PSU that's in the enclosure. So there's a single PSU. Just tidies it up. 112 volt source, powering the relay, charging the batteries, okay? So the whole concept here is that as soon as the power fails in the home, it'll flick over to the inverter and continue running everything. Basically just a homebrew UPS, okay? Pretty straightforward. You can use this in other applications too, like uh, if you're using scrap parts to build a uh, UPS for a you know, your tower or whatever. You can do that too. That works, that works, okay. So the batteries I'm using here, these are literally the same batteries that are in, the, in that enclosure. These are the Interstate uh, uh, Group 24s. They're rated at about 80 amp hour. Um, so I've got 160 amp hour sitting in this battery box. That's another upgrade I hope to make. I want to put three 130 amp hour batteries in here. And that will give us plenty of runtime and major outages and whatnot. But lately, the outages have been much shorter, which is pretty good. So that's the general rundown. Uh, the blue here is, by the way, is the neutral. I use blue because white on white just does not work. If you disagree with that, I will hit you with a golf club. Um, black for the hot. Okay. So that is line neutral. And in fact, actually here in Canada and generally in North America, black and white represent uh, 120 volts AC coming in. And the UK and most of Europe, it's brown and blue. Blue is your neutral, brown is your hot. Here, black is your hot, white's your neutral, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. There's the basic rundown. And of course, everything connects to a common ground. That is critical. So your outlet ground, that's the ground doesn't fail in a power failure because it's literally connected to earth okay just remember that folks so the grounds from the receptacles to the ground on the inverter and then the inverter's ground will be connected to the uh, ground of the outlet which will also ground the PSU that makes sure everything has a nice consistent ground and there's no different differential voltage that may blow shit up 
because you don't want that. Okay, so that's that's the um, schematic portion of the video. I'm going to leave it up here for a second while I rant, and you guys can take a picture or take a look at it or make suggestions or improvements because this is going to be constantly changing. Or something which I'm hoping to add in the not-so-distant future is an IP management device, which will allow me to turn it on and off via IP, monitor battery voltage, monitor line state, so I'll know actually if the power has failed, and essentially turn it into a fully monitored and managed UPS. I might also eventually paint the box black, because it is a dirty chunk of plywood that I scavenged and turned into things. So that's that part of the video. Okay? Gotcha. There we go. <coughs> yeah, I'm always sick. Whatever. All right, so uh, today we are making a modification to my existing battery backup system, which we use when the power goes out. We have the EPSs on all of our computers. We're using a EPC um, Pro 1500s uh, for our PCs, and my um, network infrastructure here actually has its own uh, battery backup with the power supply type thingy, so... What we're going to do now is uh, I've got a much larger battery box, which uh, you saw in my little intro there, that uh, has a big inverter on it and everything. So the whole goal here is to build something that can uh, run everything for a long period of time, maybe even potentially get rid of the UPSs we have and just run straight off of this if it's capable. I mean, then I can run my bench and everything and not have to worry about nothing. So that, that's kind of the end game here. Um, so we've got our 12-volt attenuated... Um, Relay here, 20 amp at, uh, let's see here, uh, 25 amp at 277 volts AC, uh, let's see here, one horsepower, uh, 120 volts AC, blah, 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 whatever. So, either way, so this is a nice little guy right here. It's actually out of a, uh, a previous UPS that I had, so we're going to use this bad boy. All right, so now, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so now we got our receptacles. I've got one brown, one white. That's all about, uh, you know, everybody getting along. No, actually, this is just because I need to indicate which circuit's which. This is uh, the brown one will be for one circuit. The white one will be for the other circuit. They'll both be fused independently at some point, which will make sure that if there's a short at one of the computers, it doesn't take everything out. So that's the purpose there. We've got our hover plates and everything here, which hopefully, hopefully this works out well. I'm I went to the wholesaler and picked up some goodies. Here's our battery box, or our box and everything for it. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Let's start by doing this little enclosure here. That will probably be the smartest thing to do. So, uh, what I've got is some SOW. This is 12-3. Uh, so, we're just going to pop, uh, pop this in here. Let's see, so the plugs are going to be orientated in which way? Plugs are going to be orientated like that, so... Let's see here. Yeah, I should have enough space. Where do I want to bring this in? I mean, realistically, it doesn't really matter where I bring it in. We'll bring it in. Let's see here. I feel better bringing it in on the bottom. Okay, that's just typical. Alright, so we want a little bit of wiggle room here to play with the wires, so let's start by uh, stripping this. Okay, so key here when you're stripping cables, by the way, is don't go deep. Just go deep enough. Especially if you don't want to have to re-strip it. Or, you know, you can buy a proper cable stripper. There we go. And then we'll go like this. Doop -doop -doop -doop. There we go. Now, I should just be able to peel this guy apart. Make a liar out of me, will ya? Alright, bug right. Out come the scissors. There we go. I just like to be cautious because I hate having a free strip cable like this, especially SOW. Okay. On inspection, the wires are not scored or wrecked in any way. Get all the fluffy powder off of here. Okay, so now. Just slide this bad boy in here. Just get it out of the way right off the hop. I think this was the best connector I could actually find at the store. It's not the greatest connector. I think I'm going to change it up just slightly. I'm going to uh, give it a little bit of a pinch here. 
they didn't actually have I, it's unbelievable I had to go to Home Depot actually to pick up a bunch of stuff because unfortunately my wholesaler was closed when I went to go get the rest of it on Saturday and um, Home Depot really doesn't have anything there it kind of sucks I mean like they're lacking in like so much stuff which I need so yeah well let's see how tight that I can make this thing because uh, I want it to fit properly this is just a little home project anyway, so, you know, cobbler sun and all that rot. You know what? That will compress nicely. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Actually, I was just overthinking it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's uh, do this guy up. Now, a little electrical rule of thumb is you don't have your jacket go into the box. Uh, there's a reason for that. Don't ask me what it is. Probably just cleanliness and whatnot. But uh, the other nice thing about uh, electrical is that uh, you can actually bring a tiny little bit into that box if you really, really want to, just to protect things. There we go. That should be good. Okay, so we've got this now. So now, the key thing here is uh, we're going to need a couple of things out of this. So I'm actually going to put uh, these little connectors here on it because, let's see here. This is stranded cable. Stranded cable is a bitch to put under these connectors. It just doesn't work very well. All right, so right now we're putting these guys in tandem, okay? So we're just gonna chain them together. Uh, this circuit won't actually draw more than 15 amps, but I'm using a 20 amp circuit anyway, just because it works better. Okay, so we are going, what was our orientation again? We're going on here like that. Cool, so we're gonna come in here like this. So this is a glass desk. There we go. And there we go. So I'm going to put the connectors on uh, last because uh, slipping connectors through a hole can be a pain in the ass and it's just good practice to do that part last. I'm going to have to cut that off too. That's kind of irritating. That is dumb. Okay. There we go. Oh, uh, I should probably say this now. Um... DIY electrical stuff can get you killed, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So, if you don't know what you're doing, leave it to the professionals. Okay, this is stuff that I work with on a daily basis, so I'm not concerned about that. So, now whenever you're doing household electrical and that, you do want a tail hanging out because if you make it just long enough for this, and then the poor sucker has to come along to service that next, it's gonna suck for them. Not only that, but it's really bad practice. It's dangerous because your wires get pulled and torqued in ways which they were never originally intended to do. So you want to have a little bit on there. I am going to shorten the ground just a touch because I am putting additional leads on here in a moment. Okay, so we've got these bad boys here. No, these these are general purpose, but I mean ultimately these are more automotive than anything, right? So let's see here. I'm gonna intend to put heat shrink on these guys too. This is a little bit of overkill. I did overkill. You, you can no, never go too hard on things. Now it comes to overkill. Ugh. Okay, that should fit over that nicely. Okay, so first things first. Let's get these guys on here. There we go. Alright, so let's, actually, you know what? Sorry, I made a mistake there. Because I usually sl solder these things. I'm a bit of a psychopath that way. There we go. So we shall use our red is hot. There we go. Actually, will this go over it? It will. Yay. Okay. Just gonna twist that up a little bit. There we go. It's funny that they make the blue ones with a larger inner hole than uh, the red ones. That just seems like a really stupid thing to do. Why? Why would you do that? Okay. In that case, no, I'm not gonna use a red one. Why? Because the uh, inside diameter is less. I guess maybe that's why they did it. They've got uh, slightly smaller ring connectors, so they're doing a, a red 
to indicate that that's slightly smaller. I'll still go over it. Yeah, I can make it work. Okay, so now let's get some uh, some heat on these bad boys. Okay, so I got a nice chisel tip on here right now. I'm gonna go for the big solder. Here we go. Actually, you know what I should go for too is my helping hand here, because that'll help out a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I I seen that. Uh, Adam Savage, he's, I watch him on YouTube as well. He's awesome. He's like my hero. Well, Nikola Tesla's my hero, but you know what I mean. And uh, he has the most beautiful helping hand. Um, I know Hacksmith has one too, which is pretty awesome. It's like flexi octopus type arms on it. It's uh, pretty sweet, actually. I don't think that this is the best orientation. I should move it around like this. There we go. So... That's on my wish list, though. I mean, like, ultimately, right now, I've got uh, new business on the go, so I've got a you know, feast or famine thing going on. Got to make sure that they stay feasting and not famining. There we go. There, that's a good chunk of solder. Crimping them's fine. I mean, that's why they make crimp, crimp type ends like this, but uh, I just prefer to solder it. It doesn't matter what kind of connector it is. I just find that if you solder it, typically you're going to get more reliability out of it. There we go. Melted that one a little bit. Not a big deal. You know what I'll do? I'll just pull the bugger off. There. Ha ha ha. Same with this one. You know what? Screw it. These little uh, shitty pieces of plastic can just come off. Unless it won't come off. He tricks better anyway. There we go. It's getting nice and hot. You can come off now. Away with you. There we go. Might push that in just a little bit more. Too much right there. There we go. It has congealed. Okay, now for the ground. I'll just preemptively take this off because they're pieces of dog shit, so. This is what you have to deal with when everything's closed. There we go. That's off. So this might actually be a beneficial thing, though, because now you can actually see the solder get sucked into this. Which is awesome. There we go. I'm gonna solder to adhere it and get some heat flowing. There we go. And then you can watch the solder just wick right in. There we go. So that's those guys. Alright, so now I'm gonna cut off some heat shrink for these so that they are protected. There we go. I'm gonna make a bunch of these because I need a bunch of them. Alright. That should be enough for the project. Okay. That being said, let's get some ISO and get this crap off of here. Because uh, flux is just sticky, gooey crap. And we want a good connection. In situations where you're dealing with high current or high voltage, it is critical that you have a good connection. Because if you don't have a good connection, things burn. It doesn't even necessarily have to be high voltage, high current. I've seen lots of low voltage applications where things have just burnt because uh, the connection is bad. Like PoE connections on uh, uh, Ethernet devices. They like to burn and char and catch fire, you know, when they're not happy. Okay, so let's slide this guy on here. This is actually 300 volt rated heat shrink, by the way. So, there we go. Ah. It's 
going to look nice. But looking is one thing, functioning is another. Especially when you're talking about things that may potentially void your insurance. nice and pretty. There we go. So we've got these leads. These leads are now done. Uh, now we need some carrier leads to bring over to the other side of this thing, so I'm going to just take a piece off the end of the other end of the cable. Alright, here we go. In hindsight, I really could have done this differently, but I didn't, because I'm dumb sometimes. There we go. There we go. And give it a little twist. Okay, let's get this open. There we go. Okay, and I just realized I need one more thing. I need a ground lead here. So actually, I'm going to do slightly different for the grounding in this. I'm going to use some solid for the grounding leads. It'll just make more sense, believe it or not. Here we go. All right, so uh, here's this is going to be our ground for the two devices and because it's actually like real nice you know hard copper you don't necessarily need to worry about uh, putting ring connectors on it there we go uh, where'd my exacto knife go hmm so does anybody out there like Canadian accents e or do you even notice my Canadian accent I don't even know it's uh I mean, do people from different countries listen to Canadian videos and go, wow, she's got a nice accent. I like that. It's so soothing. Well, I don't think my voice is soothing. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. I believe that I've got a very grating, horrendous voice. So mm, it's hard to believe I used to sing. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, uh, best spot for these guys will probably be, I'm going to pull this around the other way. There we go. Like that. Let me pull that up like so. It's, uh, I'm just going to shape this just a little bit. In preparation for locking it down under the lug. There we go. Actually, hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I see a flaw in this design. There we go. It's just the order of things. Yeah, that's better. I'm just going to pinch that a little bit tighter here, too. Grounding is such a critical thing. I can't express that enough. Especially after being in the field that I've been in for as long as I've been in it. I've seen shit go real south just because of bad grounding. There we go. That's a funny expression, by the way. Gone south. Like, is that a reference to... Uh, I don't know what that's a reference to, because in Canada, going south would mean first America, and then, you know, uh, South America, you know, Mexico and stuff, and then Peru and all that neat stuff. So, what, what is that... Go if anybody knows where that expression, going south, came from, I would really be interested in finding out. So... There we go. So there's the first steps. So that's the prep for the initial outlet, receptacle, whatever you want to call them. Now I need to make another lead, so I'm going to need four of these guys. Here we go. And right off the hop, let's just get rid of these stupid bloody things, because they suck. There we go. Where's my other ones? There they are. Okay. 
one. Two, three, and four. There we go. Alright, so we're going to put this aside for a second. Put that in the oven while we go back to this. Okay. Let us see here. So, let's start with the neutral. Cause, you know, that's proper practice or something. I don't know. Whatever. Actually, you're supposed to start ground neutral and then hot when you're working on stuff like this. You know, it is a beautiful sunny day out there. I feel kind of guilty because it is actually so beautiful. And uh, I'm in here doing this rather than enjoying the sunshine. Because, well, in Ontario, Canada here, you never know what the next day might bring. Especially around this time of year when, you know, blizzards come in and... God, you have to, like, run out and feed the dogs because, you know... They're getting hungry, and the weather's gotten bad. Spooks them. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you bugger. Why are you being a bugger? Don't be a bugger. I don't need that right now. There we go. Oh, I got one stray hair. You bastard. Okay, let's see here. Nip this off. There. All right, let's solder this now. There we go, clean my tip. Here we go, I want lots of solder inside there. I typically flow it in until it doesn't suck any more in. And if it doesn't suck any in off the hop, then it probably means that it's not getting the connector hot enough. Yeah, that should be good. And it's critical that you flow enough uh, solder into there, because if you don't, what you're going to get is a cold solder joint, and that connector will either come off or arc and burn and catch fire. And I think we've already established that is probably not what you are going for. So, here we go. Yeah, let's do this guy up now. Here we go. There's one. If you ever wonder why I've got tape on the handle of my uh, reflow gun here, there's a good reason for that. <clears throat> it's because the bloody thing vibrates. This is a cheaper soldering station. It's not a hacko. This is a WEP. And um, because it is cheaper, um, it vibrates because it's the, the blower, the actual fan. There's a little squirrel cage inside the handle here. And the vibrations caused this thing to be god-awful. I couldn't bear it, so I had to put tape around the handle there. Okay, so we're 20 minutes in now. Hmm, cool. All right. I like to keep track of this because uh, sometimes my videos can ramble on for a bit. And that could be a problem because uh, my camcorder only has uh, 58 minutes of recording time. And that's because it's just a cheap little... Uh, what is it? It's a Sony Handycam. But uh, hopefully this week the mount comes in for my brand new Galaxy S8 and I can actually uh, put my cell phone on my camera mount here and be able to uh, get some better videos for you guys. I mean, I'm not very popular yet. I've only got like 500 subscribers, so whatever. If you watch me, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm just trying to help. I'm not become YouTube famous or anything, so... Yeah, besides, it's just fun to make the videos. I mean, God knows I hate editing. I I hate editing. It's the most horrendous process. It just takes so long. Ugh. But that, that, that could also just be because I suck at it, too, so. If anybody ever says they're an expert on something, by the way, immediately walk away. Or run, because they are not an expert. They're an egotistical asshole. Um, there are no experts on everything. Um, there's always, always somebody who knows more than you. Remember that. We are not top of the food chain either. It's an interesting thing about our species, by the way. You ever notice that? It's just like, oh yeah, the human race is so incredible. You know, we are the most evolved beings on the planet. Really? I don't know. I may be technologically advanced, we are, but uh, 
there's a lot of species out there that have adapted and evolved very, very well to their current in, uh, ecosystems and haven't needed technology. Because why do we need technology? It's just basically to streamline things and help lazy people. Because that's what we are. People are inherently lazy, so... Did I run out of heat shrink? I might actually have to find another piece. That's not good. Because the other stuff I've got is way too big. Hopefully I've got another little piece in here that'll fit. Because I'm starting to run low. Well, I got some blue. Alright. I think I'm out of white for this one. Yeah, I'll just use a blue piece. Who cares? We're not using this as uh, color coding. There we go. Yeah, like I look at... Um, sea turtles or dolphins, you know, it's kind of interesting because they, they've they reached uh, an interesting point. They have advanced uh, communications through uh, echolocation and whatnot, and, you know, they're happy. They have uh, awesome little lifestyles, but they don't have technology. Hmm, kind of weird, eh? All right, so let's prep the first plug. All right, so um, this one here, this, this uh, is actually going to be... Actually, I think this one will be number two. So... Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Oh, hold on a second. I just noticed something. Oh, no good. It is bridged. I thought for a second there I was barked. Bark, bark, bark. Kind of sucks when you uh, break the bridge out. Because with these guys here, you can actually break the little bridge out of that and uh, use it as what's called a split receptacle, which you typically use for countertops in houses it's building code so your brass side by the way <clears throat> your brass side is your hot try to remember that okay brass is hot brass is black in the uk i don't know if they use the same thing as uh with brass if uh is brass brown over there is it i don't know there we go so there's our black Prep the white. There we go. Awesome sauce. Yeah. Now the other thing as well to remember is that hot cold. Your um, taller slot in your receptacle is typically intended for neutral. Okay, in North America that is. Uh, in Australia, your outlets are slotted as well, but uh, I know nothing about Australian electrical except what I would assume is the basics. It'd probably take me about a week to figure out everything over there. So, yeah, immerse yourself in a new environment and get licensed as an electrician in yet another country. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. Okay, so there's the first one. Now, because of this application, we're actually doing a. Uh, a lab type application. You can either leave these screws in or you can take them out. I just took them out because you don't want them rattling around in there. And by the way, if you're doing receptacles, screw your screws in all the way so that they're down, not sticking out when you're done. Because if you leave them sticking out, then they can short against the sides of the housing. I've seen master electricians do that, and that just pisses me off to like no end. All right. There we go. So, you know, I think I'm going to switch over to a green here. I do have green. It is in one of my hordes. I could have sworn I prepped it earlier, though. Yeah, maybe I'll just be a sicko and use a slot. There's my big slot. There's my slot. I just don't want to strip this. Ah, oh, my slot's too big. That one might not be. That's just right. There we go. That is very tight. There's one. And by the way, these are commercial grade receptacles. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be going hard on them. So I want to make sure that they'll hold up. There we go. Oh yeah. So now we can take this guy here. And then daisy chain them like you normally would. Each one gets its own terminal. Just makes things a little bit easier. Especially when you're using uh, spade connectors. 
You gonna go in? I hope you will. There we go. Come and knock on my door. I may have to put the file over that because it doesn't look like it's gonna be a happy one. Okay, so here we go. Let's do the second one. No, oh, FYI, the background noise you are hearing is, uh, it's a video game. I think it's Max Payne or something. There we go. At least that's what's on the menu for today, as far as I know. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> now we can get these guys prepped here. These are black. Black brass. Short. Short black brass. Bra. Short brass black. Short black brass. I don't know. Here we go. Okay. What so I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the plate on first. One day I hope to show you guys some uh, power plant stuff and potentially uh, some enterprise or commercial or carrier class UPS work. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so this one here, so I'm gonna put all that through. How does that go now? There we go. Just goes on like that. I was trying to find a bigger box actually, but uh, I didn't have any bigger boxes in stock because you can actually get larger dryer type boxes for these guys and then a uh, double duplex for the top of it, but they didn't have any in, and I was very irritated with that. There we go. It's one. So the plug part's almost done, and that took like half an hour, so what I'll probably do after I'm done assembling this plug part is dump the video to the uh, to the computer, and then you know, I'll probably break it up into uh, segments. So I'll have the prep segment with the plugs. There we go. And then I'll have the uh, next segment, which is getting the relay and whatnot all assembled. Oh, you bastard. It looks like this little brass screw has threaded itself into the connector. There we go. That's nice and tight. Okay. That was a creepy line I just heard. That's nice and tight. Good. Now, just remember, you don't want to make these too tight because if you tighten it up like a plumber, you're going to break shit. This is not plumbing. This is electrical. You want it tight but not stupid. Ground. And by the way, if you think, oh, you don't need a ground wire on it because the edge of the plug will connect to the box, then you're an idiot. Um, that's It's critical, actually. Uh, it will work. Yes, I won't deny that. It will work. But if the receptacle itself comes a little bit from the enclosure, then uh, there goes your ground. And if you've got something that is ground faulting, what will happen is you can actually get arcing uh, along the tabs of the receptacle and the box, which can eventually lead to a fire. And that's the last thing you want is an electrical fire because you did something stupid. Oh, I might have to take the file to this. Yeah, I'm going to take the file to this just quickly. That's the problem with these. They are not really meant to come out. There we go. I should do it. Let's get it started. And you're probably wondering, why didn't I use fork connectors? Because fork connectors are shit. And they are only for automotive. And even under automotive, they are shit. Only use ring connectors, folks. 
Okay, so this one here is probably going to be a pain in the arse too, so I'm going to take the file to it too, preemptively. There we go. Now if I had my Dremel on this bench, I could do this a lot easier, but my Dremel's on my other bench for some reason. And I probably at some point should move it over to this bench. That'd be a very smart thing to do if I did smart things. There we go. Alright, see, nice and tight. Good and tight. Just make sure. Yeah, we're good and tight. Okay, so I'm going to stick this one. Which side should I put you on? I think over here because it's got the long leads coming in from outside going into it. Okay, so um, also when you're tightening screws up, you want to actually have your wire wrapped in the way that you're tightening so that it actually pulls and tightens it. If you turn that around the other way, then it'll actually just spread it. It's kind of dumb. Okay, so let's get this guy in first. Why aren't you using cordless drill? Because I don't want to. And just notice the fatal flaw as well in these boxes. Uh, I'm going to have to trim that screw down a little bit because if I don't, it will be uh, driving into the... Uh, it will drive into the... Uh, yeah, that's what I need. Into the incoming cable. There we go. Actually, you know what? I think I've got some... Ah, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to dig around for screws. Time is finite. I'll just trim it down a bit. See if I can even... Oh, wow. Will you cut? Maybe not. I might have to go and dig out those screws. I would suck big. Big hairy moose. Mm, I should invest in a small set of bolt cutters. Oh, I had a set. That's right. But, uh... They didn't belong to me. There we go. That should probably do it. And we'll just run the file over that quickly. Yeah, that should work perfectly now. All right, so let's get this guy in here. Another little trick too, if you're doing household wiring, by the way, um, a recommendation that I have personally is you put tape around the outlet before you uh, uh, before you actually uh, put it in the box. And actually, I just realized something here. Because of this box design, I should probably take the tabs off. Would not be a bad idea. Because I think they might inhibit my usage of the cover plate. Oh, you're being a bugger. I think that one needs to be cut. Well, let's see here. Oh, well, those won't cut it. Let's see if my uh, nail nippers will get it. There we go. Okay, last one. Now that's that side. Get this one first. Oh, clearly a better quality plug right there. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, now these ones. Hindsight is twenty twenty, eh? Like so I'm set told. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay, so let's get this guy in here. There we go. Thread, you bastard. There we go. That be a good instructional video on how to make an extension cord, too, because it's pretty much the same way that you make an extension cord. Something else I should point out as well is neutrals on one side, hots on the other. So if you put, <laughs> if you do like some people and you put your blacks coming in on the uh, 
bottom of both sides and you put the whites on the top, you're going to get a reversed polarity on the rest of the outlets in the chain. And if you do it consistently at every outlet, then uh, you'll have reverse polarity hit or miss, even in odd plugs in your house, which is not a good thing either. You know, that's how you get electrical shocks off two prong items or pop breakers or GFIs. There you go. Especially with the items that actually have the neutral and the ground bonded inside of them because sometimes they're done like that. Shouldn't be, but uh, sometimes they are. Okay, so there's our pretty little outlet. So now let's put the safety feature over top of it. Hopefully I can make this fit too. There we go. So I think this is actually designed for a slightly different type of uh, box adapter. There we go. Okay. Oh, that one's not loose enough. I usually leave them slightly loose for this exact purpose. So, tighten it up too much. I think that'll work. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Aha! There we go. Just cobble things together, right? It's like whatever you can get a Home Depot to get a rush project done on a weekend, right? Believe it or not, I spent like 20 minutes trying to find the appropriate box and everything for this, so it didn't go very well. Um, that's why I hate buying things at Home Depot. Okay, so that is the first part done. That was actually 40 minutes, so I'll probably end up trimming that down. So that is just the plug. Uh, the next part that we're going to get into now is going to be assembling the relay pack and whatnot. So that will involve these guys. There we go. These guys can go away. Here we go. Okay. We got the relay. Got this. It's all that. And my cat's about to yip yap. Yeah, whatever. Okay. All right. So I'm going to dump this uh, segment of video into the folder, and we are going to move on to the next part, which is building the relay pack. Okay. Back to the grind. Okay. So we're on to the next step here. Eh? Uh, and the next step would be we have got to assemble our little relay assembly. So I've got these nice AC rated uh, speed connectors. You can tell because they've got the nice plastic over top of the connection itself. So that uh, make sure that you don't get any short outs or whatnot. Now on top of that, I've actually got this awesome heat shrink, which I'm going to slide over top of those and stick on there just to give it a little bit of added protection because I don't have an enclosure for this thing. This is kind of like a homebrew project that I would not roll out commercially anywhere. This is just for me at home, and since I know how to maintain it and whatnot, it's, it's okay for me. It might not be okay for you, um, but yeah, I'm just uh, throwing caution to the wind here. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, <clears throat> I'm going to prep these leads for the... Uh, where's my third helping hand? There we go. I'm going to prep these leads for um, the actuator, so the coil on here. Um, so what we need to do is, uh, of course, strip these guys down, and let's see, I need to set my audio on here to go through my headphones so that you can't hear beep beep boop. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to get this in here. Now, this guy here, I'm not sure if I will actually be able to take advantage of... Uh, I don't think I'll actually be able to take advantage of soldering these guys. In fact, I think it's actually be a pain in the ass to actually get the wire in here. Yeah. 
Alright, so I'm going to slide this little diode in here first. Make sure that doesn't go in too far. So, uh, right about there should be good. So, I'm going to just bend that over while holding it so we know that it's in the right place. Let's see here. I think I'm going to just make these just a little bit longer. So, since I'm not going to be uh, soldering these connectors, which is what I was hoping to do, because I'm obsessive about doing that. I'm going to grab a brush and actually I'll just use my fingers and get the flux off of here. Flux it. Flux it good. Okay, there we go. Alright, so we've got that in there now. We shall make this just a little bit longer. There we go. That should be long enough to properly seal. Alright, so let's slip this in here. Now this diode, do you want the uh, stripe? towards the positive in this situation. Uh, reason being is the diode's there basically to shop, uh, stop any inductive backflow from your, uh, let's see here, from your transformer, or your coil, I should say. It's inside of the relay. If you don't do that, um, you'll just get induction and stuff. I mean, it's not entirely necessary, I guess, but it's recommended. Okay, so let's make sure that we can actually uh, do this well. I want to make sure that I've got enough uh, lead on here to get inside because these uh, leads may not be quite long enough. Grr. Does that work? Is that in? Okay, yeah, it should be. All right, so let's uh, fiddle around with this. This is only. This one's only for the. Uh, oh, wrong place. There we go. Now this is a DC coil. Just uh, keep that in mind. There we go. That's on there. So we'll get this bad boy off. On we go. So that is the second side here. So I'm just going to simply grab that and bend it over. There we go. So now, yep, that's down and in there. Once I was up above it, now I am down in it. There we go. Okay, so that's in there now. So, uh, yeah, it's connected. So let's try to pinch it with these guys. Oops, did not work. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> let's try to pinch this guy now. Mm, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, you bugger. This is a real pain in the ass, eh? You know that. Maybe I could... There we go. Once upon a time, I had a set of crimpers for this purpose, but because I started uh, soldering them, I got rid of the crimpers. Uh, I don't even know where they went. So, yeah, that changed. Maybe I'll use my tiny vice grips. Crimp, damn you! Oh, you bastard. This is not going to be easy. Okay, so it looks like I actually have to take this thing apart again. Didn't want to do that. You know, once it's on the relay... Damn it. Hold on one second. We're going to pause for a second. Alright, picking it up again. Okay. So, uh, here we go. I had to pause the camera to swear and scream and lose my shit for a little bit while I figured this out. So uh, I'm just going to use these connectors because uh, these ones I fucked up. Um, these are pretty much useless for anything other than when control circuits. I mean, like, they only handle 22 gauge, 16 to 22 gauge, so those are completely useless. These ones that I have here are rated for about uh, 12 to 10. So we're just going to use those ones. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. So, yeah, I did this one. This is a low voltage size, so it's okay that it's like this. I soldered it like I normally do, so it's good to go. Okay, that's another part of the project that we will just explain sooner or later. Okay, so I'm putting the relay aside now. That was an interesting sound. I'm not sure what it was, but something went dink dink. Okay, so let us uh, solder on another connector. Now, these ones I have to heat shrink just for best practice because... Uh, 
I don't want any uh, exposed metal on the contacts inside of this thing because I don't have an actual enclosure for it inside here. All right, so I'm going to throw on some of this awesome sauce here. Some flux. Flux it good. There we go. I'm going to slide this guy on here. The nice thing is there's little stops inside of these guys that uh, hold them in place. So now I can stick this on here like so. Hopefully it won't fall off the desk. I can probably... There we go. Do that. All right, so let's get some solder inside of here. All right. Here we go. Same thing. Get a blob of solder on there so that it starts to adhere. And then just start feeding it in until it keeps going. You want it to soak in as much as it can before it actually starts puddling on the outside. That way you know you got a good connection. It starts puddling on the outside, you got too much, and then you'll have to wick some off. So, a little bit on there to get it started. Let's see here, maybe this way you guys can see a little bit better. There we go. There we go. So it's sucking it in. So there we go. We've got, oh, can use definitely a little bit more in there. There we go. Lock it in. That's good. I already prepped up some heat shrink. This is the glue stuff that I love to use so much. So there we've got uh, two of the three leads that are going to be connecting to this relay. Uh, done. Move it up just a little bit. Oh shit, I dropped all my solder. I don't like that. Okay. Here we go. Get in there. There, that's perfect. Okay. This plastic seems to be behaving in the same way that heat shrink does, which is pretty cool. Alright, so we've got, uh, this is our out. This is going to the plugs. This is going to be the one coming in from the world here, or from our local electrical grid. And now I need to make the last one, which will simply be for <coughs> going into the inverter. Okay, here we go. Let's get the inverter one ready. Here we go. And do you guys think I should put uh, music into my videos? I mean, like, is that necessary or? Because it does get kind of quiet sometimes while I'm working, and I just figured that uh, from the whole recording thing, you know, dead air is supposed to be frowned upon, right? Which is why I try to talk as much as possible. It's not that I want to hear my voice. In fact, I hate my voice. I just like to uh, keep you people entertained while I'm doing this because you know, I don't know if it's soothing to watch people work on electrical and electronics and stuff or whether you do enjoy hearing people talking, but uh, you know, I'm kind of new at doing these YouTube video things and I'm always learning, so your opinions matter to me. It's just like, oh, do you want to hear me talking? Do you want me to shut up? Do you want music? Let me know in the comments below. All right, here we go. I'm suck some solder in here. There we go. Awesome. Okay, that's all in there. Well, that sun feels so nice on my back. That's another YouTuber no-no, apparently, is that you're supposed to uh, black out your windows and live like a friggin' goblin. Uh... Not me. I love the outdoors. There we go. Okay, so those guys are all soldered up nicely. Awesome. <coughs> okay, so now, I think the last part of this where I actually put the heat shrink on all these guys will have to be done inside the enclosure, so I'll have to move the enclosure over here. But there's a couple little details I need to work on first. This transformer. See, I was going to use this pretty little mean well here to run, to run this. But then I realized something. These guys have capacitors in them. I could take all the capacitors out, but then I'm wasting a meanwhile. See, we want this relay to fail. We want it to close as quickly as possible. So we're just gonna use a basic run-of-the-mill little utility transformer here. And um, we are gonna use this to actually uh, 
power this. So we're just because we're working with the DC. Uh, let's see here. Where's my slot? Because we're working with the DC relay, we need to feed DC into it for it to work. So to do that, we need to stick a little diode on it. So we're going to create one more little cable here. Now, you know, I could actually put a full wave bridge rectifier or whatever the hell on it, but uh, eh, whatever. So we'll just go like this. Did I break my rule? I did. I need to do this one around like this. There we go. Let's take that on here. And we'll get the this one this way. And the same thing, I'll just bend it around. There we go. Okay, so now if I run AC to this guy, I should get my dirty DC out of here. I don't want any caps on it because I just want it to fail. So we're going to do a quick test on this guy now and make sure that it fails the way that I want it to. So I need my DC test cord, which is, I think, right... Uh, damn! Hold on one second. I, I have to make a million of these things. Okay. Mm. Let's try something here. Okay, so here's our AC input leads. This is ancient. This is an old 120 volt uh, 5 watt 5 VA. Let's see here. 10 volt doorbell buzzer thingy. Let's see what happens if we hook this thing up to AC. Will it explode? Will flowers grow out of it? Who knows? I need to pick up some more Wago connectors, by the way. They're actually harder to get than you think here in Kanekistan. Alright, there we go. This is for our testing ability. I break all the rules. Okay, so let's see what we got here. This is dirty DC. Let's see now. Oh, we got 7 volts out of it. Maybe enough to run. It says 10 volts DC on there. You know what? I'm, I may actually have to... Uh, I may have to bridge this guy. I didn't want to. Whatever. Let's go like this. We need the extra a little bit of power. There we go. That's all you really need to do. Eventually this thing will be prim and proper. Realistically, I just need this before storm season kicks in. So let's see here. So we've got that one going that way, and then we need this one going this way. There we go. Let's wrap that around so it doesn't blow up. Now I could just put a full wave bridge rectifier on here, but uh, this is more fun. This is hobby stuff, right? Okay, so we'll go like this. Wrap that around so that it's the two diodes cross each other rather than the... There we go. I should be able to pull this around. I'll probably just gob some hot snot on here. Whatever. It's only temporary anyway. Okay, there we go. I uh, should increase the voltage just a little bit. There, that's more like it. 12.9, that's exactly what we need. Okay, so now that we've sorted this little mess here, I'm going to put some solder on here. And some flux. Let's see here. Doo, 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 doo. Eventually we'll solder some wires on here. Don't want any caps, because again, I don't want any kind of... Uh, uh, any kind of delay. I want this relay to close as fast as possible to make sure that the uh, circuit continues to carry electricity back to the computers and whatnot is ever connected to it. So that uh, 
they don't turn off because if your circuit is a little bit slow at switching, what you're going to get is uh, you're going to get a delay and the power won't get to the device in like the millisecond that is required to make it function properly. So now let's test this out. Eh, get back in there. Okay, so let's see if this thing buzzes like a mofo. All right. Oh, well, that's perfect. And then if I unplug it from the wall, instant. That is exactly what we want. Okay, so this is our power supply, our attenuator, our trigger for the uh, for the AC side of things. Good, good, good. So now we'll just you know we'll tidy this up a little bit, put some heat shrink on it. Heat shrink and hot snot. Most amazing things in the world. That should be big enough, I think. Got another one. Here we go. Okay, so that being said, we're on to the next step. And the next part of it, I'm probably going to have to do inside of the box because I've got to add fuses and all sorts of stuff into my enclosure. Dirty old homebrew. God love it, eh? Okay. Put some solder on there. Beautiful. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using such a heavy cable for just controlling this relay, it was just what I had lying around. This is a nice Sunday project, you know, a nice relaxing Sunday thing, you know, just pittering around trying to improve things around here, you know, like homeowners tend to do. Except I'm not a homeowner. I rent in a ghetto. Big difference. Okay. So we're going to try not to melt the heat shrink here. There we go. Okay, so there's one side. And now, if we're lucky, I can slip this over. There we go. Okay, so that's on there. Let's see. Oh, you're being a bastard. Of course you are. There we go. So there's one side. Now let's do the other side now. I think we're ready to actually get into the box now. There we go. Nice. 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 Okay. I want the heat shrink. There. All right. See how many electrical codes we can violate today. Okay, that's awesome. All right, so this guy's set. Uh, just as a final test, let's uh, plug her back in and see how she behaves. This transform is ancient, by the way. I got it from a friend. I like cobbling crap together from stuff I've got lying around anyway. It's kind of fun. Unless I'm doing something professional. Then it's got to be done up well. Okay, let's see. Beautiful. Alright, we got exactly what we wanted. So this part's done. So now one last little detail. Because I like paying attention to details. This is going to be flopping around a little bit. But my main concern isn't the flopping around part. My main concern is the isolation in case a piece of metal or something lands on it. So we're just going to do a quick little cleanup on here and add some... Uh, I'm going to add some hot snot. It's great stuff. Even though this is the DC side, I still want to isolate it. I also have to see if I can find a terminal block around here so I can connect all the cables together and make it all proper. If not, you know what, just in the meantime to get it going, I might just use some uh, wire nuts. Not ideal, but actually, they are ideal. Ironic, eh? No, I mean, like, ideally not the best solution, but uh, you know what? This is something I can go pick up more parts for during the week, so that's not a end-of-the-world type scenario. Um, let's see here. I need a hot glue stick. I don't think I've got any on my bench. Do I? Let me see here. Um... Hello, hot glue. Uh, I might have to grab another stick designated to the bench. 
I love that there's an instruction manual on here. Do not eat. Yeah, no shit. Okay, so we're just going to, uh... Oops. Get back here. I just need something to hold this thing up for me while I do this. There we go. Nice. Okay. Notice all the smoke coming off of there? That means you're doing it right. I want this stuff nice and melty. One of the cool things is, is this stuff kind of tempers. So if you uh, get it hot enough and then it cools down enough, it will actually get very, very hard. This is a little secret of mine. Everything's got an application. I mean, the nice thing about this stuff is that uh, if you really need to get into something, you can just heat it up a little bit and peel it off. And if you don't need to get into something, you just leave it on there forever. There you go, just building it up a little bit. And all the DC stuff should be isolated now. There we go. I'm going to stick that over here. Turn this down just a wee bit. And yeah, that looks great. All right, so we'll let that cool for a minute. All right, so that is the relay preparation. So we've got the relay here. We've got all the leads that are going to be plugging into it prepped up. So I guess the next step is is uh, to move the box over here and get the camera over it so I can start uh, mounting stuff and everything. So we're going to cut this segment and move on to the next one. Has anybody seen my goat? Seen my goat? Seen my goat? All right. So I've moved my inverter here just slightly kitty corner to where it was before. Oh, this is weird. Oh, yeah, because I've got the camera, like, swung out from the bench. So what I'm looking at on my view screen, it's kind of mirrored what I'm actually seeing. That's kind of fucking me up. Okay, so uh, first things first, I'm going to mount this little box right here. And that's going to be the first thing that I do, actually. I'm using brass screws because we're dealing with battery acid around this thing. So and because they're brass, it's going to be... Yeah, they don't want to stay on. So I might actually just have to get creative here. See if I can do this. Nope. There we go. Just press that in there like so. Ah! I can't get my screwdriver in there, which means I gotta go over for my long bit. Uh, uh. So I got a couple of. Oh, I have another long bit there. Uh, okay. There we go. I do want to put some indicators and stuff in here, too, just to be cool, but I probably don't need to. I mean, realistically, as long as I get it up and running today, this will be good. Okay, will this one hold on? Well, maybe it will. Aha. Uh -huh. Here we go. So, yeah, Sam Lex for your regular run-of-the-mill stuff is... Well, not even just front of the mill. It's pretty good carrier class equipment, really. There. That's rock solid. Now I can put the plate back on here. Uh, I think it would like that. Right. Now, Sam Lex makes some awesome uh, DC plant equipment, which is kind of how I got into them in the first place, is that uh, you use them in towers and whatnot. They are amazing at towers. For DC power supplies and rack mount chargers and whatnot. All right, so that's that. Now, a little thing I forgot to think about, and I'll have to deal with that next week, is getting a proper terminal, uh, terminal block in here for my all my crap to connect to. Let's see here. So we've got this. I'm just going to run it through this hole here, which I already drilled in. Um, those are also air vents, by the way. There's vents on the bottom, vents on the top, because we're dealing with flooded lead acid cells, and uh, if you don't know about battery chemistries by now, then you got problems, but... Uh, Flooded lead acid cells gas. Okay. They're gassy. Okay, so that's in there. So now I had a couple of things which I wanted to put up here. Um, they are where? Um, they are fuse holders. Okay, so now I could use the modern ones, but I really like these. Because when the fuse pops, this lights up. So that's pretty damn cool. I was thinking of. You put two like right here, like maybe three. So, 
Let's get the caliper, and then we can measure what size bit we need to drill that out. E, hoser. The hell's my drill, too? I should probably obtain my drill before I move much further. Hold on. my cutting thing. There it is. I'll have to put a new blade on this. The dollar store blades really suck, but that's an awesome dollar store knife. So, oh, did I already cut it open? Cool. I think these are going to be three-eighths or half-inch, so let's find out. Zero. Uh, 0.6. There we go. Okay, so point six, so that'll be five eighths, I think. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do. Alright, so we should probably get the ruler out so we don't make fools of ourselves. Let's see here. Get the rulers. And I'll use a pen. Even though, like, you know, in shop class you're learned never to use pens and whatnot. Okay, here we go. Not that I can actually do this. Kind of sucks. So we'll go. Let's see here. I wanted to. I'm trying to keep everything over here in case I put bigger batteries in it. Okay, so we want it about one inch. You know, it's funny. I literally just swept this off. I'm sure of it. Let's sweep it again because. There is cat hair all over it. The cats like to sleep on this thing from time to time. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we've got the mark, I can make a line to put these guys against. There we go. This is where we're going to install all of our tech. Okay, so first things first, what's the width of the, one of these guys? They are... Now yeah, we're going to say that they need about an inch between each other. So we'll go. We'll start one right here. This will be our first one here. One inch. Make our next one right there. Next one right there. Next one right there. And then the next two can be like this. Oh yeah. So if I measure this out properly, our pilot lights can go there. So we've got mains good, mains fail. Fuse, fuse, switch for bypass. All right, if that's the case, just make sure. That works. Cool. All right, so we've got our mark. Let's see what happens if we uh, do not try this at home. Especially if you suck with power tools or you just charged your batteries because batteries produce hydrogen sulfate gas, which can be somewhat explosive if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, let's see here. Move that over for a little bit. There we go. Now a spade bit would be the best option right here, but hey, whatever. Let's see. There we go. Ah, actually, that cut a lot cleaner than I was hoping. Sweet. Okay, now for the third. Wow, I can't believe how clean those are coming. Okay, so that's the, uh, those are the first holes. Wow, maybe that was a good choice using the auger bits rather than spades. Hmm. Yeah, I'm no expert on drill bits. All right, well, if that's the case, these guys should slide right in quite nicely. So um, let's get a uh, 
wrench. Get these little things off. Kind of stoked. You know, these are pretty old school. I mean, I could use like breakers or modern fuse things, but they're pretty damn cool. So, kind of want to use them. All right, so there's our first one. So that one, uh, I will probably label after. All right, so that'll probably be the in. And then this one here will be the uh, on to the next one. We need three. One in, one from the plugs, and one out. Yeah, can I get these washers off? Because that'll help me out greatly if I can. Cool. All there we go. You can tell those are old when the rubber washers just fall off, eh? Okay, where's my third fuse? Oh, there it is. So those are our fuses. I would like to play. I would like to play the remaster the first one as Awesome. And then we've got some pilot lights here, which I wanted to put in there too, by the way. Uh, so inverter good. So these little pilot lights here, they're actually pretty cool. These are like old. I think they're LED. I really hope they are, because they're pretty cool. I'm sure these are LED. I'm sure that these are LED. If they're neon, whatever, I'll make them work somehow. Okay, so we want power good, inverter good, and output good, I think. Or, you know, I could just do it slightly differently. So I'll have, let's see, if these ones work. Oh, yeah, they'll fit. Okay, so now we need to figure out what size these guys need to be. Oh, one of these is missing its guts. Does that mean that you can actually open these things up? Oh, apparently you can. Let's find out what's in them. Oh, they're neons. Cool. All right, which means that actually I might only be able to use the two. Uh, yeah, neons. Yeah, cool. Well, these are pretty old. Uh, I might be able to change these to LED if I really wanted to, but who cares? All right, so that's cool. So we've got some neons here. So these will just be for the DC out or the uh, AC output working. All right, so now let's figure out uh, what size of a drill bit I need for these, and hopefully I've got an auger for that. What do I do with my caliper? Anybody see that? Hmm. Caliper. Here it is. What do you got? There we go. Point three forty. Uh, let's see here. I think that will be this one. ZC1. Oh, maybe a bit smaller. Might have to actually bust out the drill bits. That's pretty close. Use this one. Here we go. Now, I do have some other plans on here. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be uh, getting a IP control module slash monitoring module for this at some point. Um, I would also like to get a current, well, I guess, no, I guess the IP thing does all that too, but I want the current sense on it as well, so I can know how much load's on it, know when mains fails, all that cool stuff. There we go. I should make one more. So one for each. This, this, that works out pretty good, I think. Here we go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I do believe that I grabbed some step bits. And I put them somewhere. Oh, there they are. Because I wanted to clean these little holes up a tiny bit before I actually uh, stuck stuff in them. So, you know, Step bits don't like to be in wood, by the way. So if you put them in wood, chances are they would be blunt as shit when you are done. 
Okay, so all this crap is going on the floor. Goodbye. Okay, so now we need to create an order for this. All right, so I believe I'm going to go mains, inverter, out. Bloody hell, I might have to actually glue these things back together because they might end up just uh, falling apart when I'm putting them in. It's not a good thing. We do not want that. Okay, so we're going to go inverter. There we go. And is this one good? Yep, no, this one's good. I, I don't have to tear this one apart. Why am I putting pilot lights on them? Easy peasy. Because I want to know what's working and what's not. There we go. I mean, it's not necessary, but hey. And that one comes off too, so we'll just take those. I might actually end up gutting these and putting LEDs in them. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, and this is just a fun little Sunday project I'm working on. This is not a uh, commercial jobby application y type thingy. Just for my own stuff. There we go. So we've got our jewel lights in there. We've got our fuses and all that. Okay, so now we get to fasten them. Make sure that they all anchor nicely. So we need to actually tilt that up just so. And let's see if anything made it through. Oh, it did not. So we're probably going to end up hot snotting these guys, which I'm cool with. That'll be fine for the application. Okay, so that means I need to break out the hotch nut dispenser. And it is somewhere in my hoard. Somewhere in my hoard. Hmm. Or maybe I don't know where it is. That being the case, we'll have to, uh, do it the good way. Hopefully this reaches. There we go. So I guess first things first, I'll get these little pilots because they're fairly loose. So I'll just stick these in just loosely for now. Just let them hold them in place. And then when I find the hot glue gun, I will properly goober these guys in. Push these guys in so that they're all flush. And the fuse holders. There's one. There's two. There's three. No, I don't worry. That's not a fire. It's good. <clears throat> okay, so that should hold stuff in place. Yeah, screw it. I'll just goober some on. Now that that's all held in place, I can just goober it on here. I mean, the best thing to do for this would actually be get off my ass and find myself a piece of steel and drill some holes. I could actually just go to my buddies and actually see if he can mill me something, you know, put me off a plate and I can stick all this stuff in it. But if I'm going to do a proper plate, I don't think I'm going with this old school shit. I think I will probably end up going with proper breakers and whatnot because that would be the smart thing to do. Or even just build an entirely new box out of steel with a brass battery box in it or something to keep everything from, uh, you know, getting corroded. There we go. Ow, 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 burnt my finger. All right, cool. Uh, what time we got left? 41 minutes. Good. This is turning out to be an all day thing. Okay, so we'll just let that cool for a second. Now, the next thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to route all the electrical in this thing. That's going to be the tricky part. Oh, Jesus, we just groomed our dogs, so there's so much hair everywhere right now. It's brutal. 
Okay, let's see here. Yeah. Hopefully that didn't unplug my mic. Good. I need to get something cordless. Like all the big guys have. Oh, I spilt my thermite all over the table. Bloody hell. Okay, so this is the uh, cable that we have that's going to be going to common on this relay because it's the output. So I'm just going to start by finishing off the mounting process of everything. So this is going on the common. The common is back here. Um, let's see here. We're going to make, uh, we'll just keep things consistent here. So we've got, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I need a heat shrink for these guys. That is critical for this application because if uh, you don't want any of this shit, low voltage and high voltage mixing is not a good thing. Um, so first things first, drop that for a second. This is the, uh, well, you know, we just put it together. Okay, so I'm going to cut some off of this. I could have sworn I had two pieces that were cut exactly the same length. And I do. Good. Okay, so these are the first two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this heat shrink over them first. Then I'm going to connect them. There we go. Now if you're wondering where I got these relays, by the way, they actually came from Noma. This is a uh, Noma, uh, which they're using Song Xuan, who I've never heard of before. But hey, who cares? It's got a CSA and a UL on it. I mean, hey, if it worked for Noma, then clearly it's legal to use. So, all right, so let's get this guy on here. We'll get the heat shrink on here because we're working with 120 volts AC. Got to make sure everything in this is isolated well. There. Okay, so that's on there. Now I can hit it with the heat gun. There we go. This is a really nice heat shrink, by the way, because it actually has glue in it. And I really like that. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of figuring to do. I'm kind of just winging this. There's no true design concept here except for the, uh, this is how it works electrically. I haven't actually figured out exactly how we're going to connect all the cabling yet. But once it's together, I can figure out what I need to make it permanent, so... We're kind of still in the prototype stage, I guess, with my giant homebrew UPS. Alright, so there's the first connector. So that's the uh, common. It's going out to the electrical outlets. Okay, so that one's done. Okay, so then the next one we need to do is the inverter cord. Okay, so this is the power in. This is the inverter cord. Okay, so this is actually the power in coming from here. So yeah, I think there's three things that need to connect to that. I'm going to try to put that transformer over here somewhere so that I can tie it into this PSU right here, the charger that's currently there. Um, okay, so this I left a nice long cord on it intentionally because uh, I'm going to cut it off when I get the right length for it. Alright, so here we go. So we need to go, uh, which hole would be the best one? I guess any of them really. Yeah, we'll go to this one. Got to find the right hole. There we go. You got the wrong one. You might get punched. There we go. Okay. So this is inverter. All right. So the inverter one is going to be... Let's see here. There we go. So the inverter one is going to be the normally closed. There we go. So remember, when you're working around batteries, they like to explode, whether it's electrically or chemically. They really love to explode flooded lead acids. It's like they're kind of their thing. They're just so full of energy, right? Okay, so there's the first set. So this is the inverter set now. Okay, which we will have to break and put onto the fuse. 
I'm gonna have to break all these and put them on the fuses somehow. We'll figure that out in a minute, by the way. Okay. Again, this is a prototype. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be normally closed, so this is the inverter right here. Okay, there we go. There is our white. Cool. Alright, so that's on there. Now, before I put this all together, I want to make sure that I get the uh, mains lead on here, too. It's right off the hop. Now, you'll notice this one doesn't have ground on it. Don't worry, because I'm actually doing a ground bus inside of here. This is going to be a proper ground bus. Okay, so let's see. Again, grounding is critical. It stops you from dying. It is very, very important for electrical work. Okay, how am I going to do this now? I think, I think, I think, I think. It'll lead these guys back just a little bit. Here we go. And maybe forward? Yeah, forward works. There we go. It's funny, this this uh, relay is actually out of a UPS, but it seems rather tight. I think that's because when they built the thing, they actually soldered the wires to it, and as opposed to actually connecting the wires to it properly with spade connectors. And me being a stickler for having the ability to change a bad relay, uh, I prefer to actually have the spade connectors on here. There we go, they're on, on there nice and tight. So now we got to squeeze this in. Can I squish it, squish it in? Yeah. This is tight. Tight like a tiger. There we go. I'm going to bend that forward a touch. There we go. First one's in. So we can get the second one in. Third one in. Fourth one in. Now we can hit her with the heat gun. And I think this time I'm going to take the little bevel off of it. There we go. And I will put that up there on the drywall. There we go. Yeah, this might be a sweet little operation. There we go. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm thinking about it in my brain right now. Once I get this thing working, tested, and proven, I'm just going to have to... Uh, I think I'm going to order a contactor as well, a 30 amp contactor as opposed to a relay. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that because I, I'd rather have contactors in place and all the proper electronics in place than this Jerry Rig built in somebody's garden shed UPS. There, so that looks pretty good. Okay. There we go. So we've got everything. Our DC's isolated. Uh, the AC is all good to go. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so now we can get the grounds here. Oh no, did I just make a boo boo? Oh, I did, didn't I? I put one of them on backwards. I'll have to wait till that cools and then I can pop it off and slide it back on. Stupid, pay attention. Eh, rather than waiting for it to cool, I can just do this too. High speed cooling. Squirt, squirt, squirt. There we go. Now we'll just wiggle these off. That's the nice thing about not soldering it, you know? There we go. Alright, so there we go. Now she's all proper. Black's on one side, white's on the other. Awesome. Okay, so we're getting there now. So now I've got to figure out where I'm going to put this transformer. And again, I'm trying to keep everything back here because back here is kind of away from where all the batteries are going to go because eventually I'm going to have like one, two big batteries in here. Yeah, I want like a lot more capacity. So uh, this will work. I think I'll just stick this right here. I mean, it's ever changing, so whatever. Uh, yeah, that'll work. We'd like that. Okay, so we'll get a couple of screws in there. I think I could probably use a drill now, so that'll make things easier. Let's hope these brass ones will fit. Okay. Yeah, they'll fit. Cool. Alright, so first things first. So this is going to 
control of the relay. Uh, let's see here. What did I do with my marking device? Hey, Mitchell, can you pass me a black Sharpie? Thank you. Yeah, you know what? I can tilt this down now that I've got some glue on those devices. There we go. Can I get... Yes, I can. Let's hope that that holds. That will be perfect. I just got it sitting on the stool right now. Okay, so getting everything in place now. This nightmare regime. That should be enough. Again, I've got like a special amount of space allotted specifically for batteries, so I gotta work with what I got. You're special. There we go. No, you're not. None of you are special. None of you are here on purpose. All of you are going to die. That's just the way it is. You need to accept those facts. Or you're going to live a really shitty life. There we go. Yeah, I can't wait to get the proper power converter in here. That'll make a big difference. Rather than this shitty little... 15 amp makeshift charging circuitry. There we go. Slip that on there. Yep. Okay, we're good. I get the last screw in. Then we can figure out how that thing's going to connect. What I'm going to do is I can actually just tap the existing leads that are there. Just put some heat shrink on them. I'm about to change all the AC wiring on here anyway completely. So, there. That's there. This is the AC side of things right here. So I actually do have a lot of wiggle room that I can work with. So if I just take these guys here. I'll splice into them. Um, actually, you know what? I might be able to... Mm, no, that does not comply with my OCD. Okay, so let's see here. So we can go like this. We'll go... Pop! Yeah, that's what you were expecting, weren't you? This is not Medi's channel. I don't like things going boom. Can you tell I'm a YouTuber? I mean, I may not be like a popular YouTuber like who gets millions of views and shit, but I love YouTube and I watch a lot of YouTube stuff. I'm a huge fan of all these guys. I just hope that my contributions are uh, helping people out. Alright, so now I'm going to have to put a fuse on there. I don't think I had one before anyway, so... Here we go. There we go, and we're going to need to solder this for sure. Uh, so, but the next thing's next is we need to find some heat shrink that'll suitably cover this. I think this yellow stuff will work. I don't have any big stuff left, I don't think. i got yellow and blue. I really need to go and pick up some more. So, um, we'll just cut a couple. We'll use the yellow and blue, that'll work. There we go. Oh, it fits. And 
I think we need to make these a little bit longer. And you know what? In fact, I think I'm going to remove that. This is like the heat shrink party. There is so much heat shrink on here. I am such a bad girl. No, I don't have daddy issues, though. Okay. Actually, you know what? I do have daddy issues. Holy shit. Everything is now clear. There we go. No, daddy, no! Isn't that horrifying? I am a horrifying individual. Alright, so I'm going to cut this heat shrink off because we don't need that there. Here we go. Here we go. So now we combine these and solder them. This works. Okay, so now let's get some uh, flux and solder. There we go. I should see about getting an extension lead for my soldering iron. That'd be a very smart thing to do. Uh oh, we got a Newfie loop here. There we go. Crisis averted. It's another term I don't really understand, Newfie loop, because uh, you think you figure that Newfies would be amazing with knots and stuff, but uh, there's all sorts of derogatory terms and stuff for no uh, for Newfies. Alright. Okay, so this is the charging slash control circuitry. The current charging slash control circuitry. There we go. That's nice. Okay. That is the current charging slash control circuitry. Let this cool for a second. There we go. Um. Awesome, there we go. There's the first piece of heat shrink. There is the second piece. There we go. All right, now I can hit it with some heat again. It'll be nice to see if this thing rents the whole office without any major hiccups. My only concern would be the inrush. The surge of everything taking over. Alright, so that's now tied in down here. Okay, so we've got that. Let's get everything set up and then we can start setting up fuses. Okay, so this needs to tie into this plug right here. I think this plug is rated for 25 amps. So I think the easiest thing to do would be to cut all this off. There we go. Alright, so we'll do that. And then I might actually take this right off the box for a minute while I'm working on it. Okay, that could be slid back down. Now, this is actually, this is coming together. Jesus Christ, it might actually work. Um... How are we doing for time? 
21 minutes remaining. Let's see if I can finish it in 21 minutes. I doubt it. All right. What do we got here? Nope. Okay, we're going to change this up just a little bit. I think I'm actually going to put a cable on this. Oh, I am going to have to change this, actually. Sorry. Three amps. That's only good for charging. I cannot use that for... Uh, I cannot use that for uh, running all the shit that I plan to plug into it. Which means I need to go find another power plug. I liked this one because it had a filter on it, but... Whatever. Okay, we're going to pause for a second. Do a little jump cut while I dig through my bins of garbage. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> I figured something out. I managed to find a 20 amp power connector for my... Here we go. This is a 20 amp inlet. Uh, see how it's kind of funny? It's all flat. So I've got a 20 amp right there. So I'm going to pop this guy in here. And then this is the inlet fuse that I put on here. This is just the inlet fuse off the mains. So um, I made it an inline. So this will plug into the hot here. And then it will feed the hot right there. So now I'm just going to make sure at least once yet they're labeled line and neutral. That's great. So now I can pop this guy in here. If I can get it in here, can I get it in the hole? I can get it in the hole. That's a nice little swap in. Yeah, actually what you didn't see was behind the scenes, I filed the bastard out so it would fit. Yes, that's the magic of video editing. You get uh, caught up in it thinking that it's reality, but it's absolutely not. So I sat here and drank and yeah, you know, bitched and moaned about trying to get in there, and finally I did, and now uh, we've got our 20 amp connector. Booyah. Here we go. You son of a gun. I'm going to swap this out for a uh, green. Green it is. There you go. Okay. There's one. Probably a good thing I upgrade this thing anyway. I mean, like, uh, trying to run two computers off of a 3-amp power port. Yeah, that seems like a really stupid idea. All right, so that's that. Uh, while we're up here, should I uh, put the... No, I'll put that on last. I'll just systematically assemble everything. This is a pretty big job. That's why I'm doing it on a Sunday. Okay, so these are labeled. Which one is line? Which one's neutral? Uh, all right. Neutral. There we go. So lines right here. And I'm gonna want to put some heat shrink on that. So let me just get some heat shrink. Bloody hell! I need a better microphone system. This is not working for me. I'm using my Astros because they seem to have the best audio I can find on a budget. There right, we go. Cut two of these. There we go. Okay, so this one's going to go on here. And I can plug this one in. Awesome. Slide that over, and then I can heat it up. Get it on there. Okay, so that being said, we've now got to uh, make a connector to go onto this. Because I'm doing everything with spades. So that uh, it just works better. It's easier to manage, right? Alright. Microphone cable is being an asshole. There we go. Okay. So, let's get on with the show. 17 minutes on this recording. Oh, I can't wait to start using my cell phone for doing videos. I'm really looking forward to that because apparently it's got 64 gigs in it instead of 8, so I'll be able to record in 1080p instead of 1080i, and the image quality will just be so much better. Okay, so let's see here. So, um... We need to get in here. There we go. Well, 
that sucker up. There we go. In you go. There's one. There we go. And let's go for two. Two schmoo. Ow. This is really easy if you're not recording because you can just do all sorts of fun stuff to get her down nice and easy. Alright, nope. She's good. There's a nice uh, solder on there. What do you call solder joints? Do you call them solder or do you call them welds or what? I don't know. Let's see here. So how long a piece do I need? Ah, you know, I might as well just make it the full length. There we go. There, she's plugged in. Let the heat shrink over her. Nice. This whole thing's going to be dismantled a bowl. And who the hell is messaging me right now? I'm getting a little irritating. Okay. I need my portable blowtorch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Open flame around flooded lead acid batteries. Yay! I wonder if I can get this on here. Let's try it. I can. Yeah, you know, I would break out the big heat gun. But the thing's so bloody loud. You wouldn't be able to hear anything. It's gonna be a long video. I'm either gonna have to do a lot of speed ups or a lot of cutouts. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. No, there's a lot of editing going to be involved. That's going to be a bitch. Oh, I hate editing. But I like publishing videos. Almost forgot. Got to get down here and get this one. Here we go. Making sure all the uh, 120 volt stuff is properly insulated. There we go. Is that connector? I don't think I've got enough left of these cutoffs that I've got to do the last one, which is the neutral. The ground I'm going to leave exposed, which is perfectly fine. Here we go. So I intend to actually stick the ground on there. And then, uh, what's he saying? I'm going to stick the ground on there. And the ground should be exposed anyway, because if anything shorts, it should be hitting the ground. So, whatever. Right, let's get this in here on an angle. I hope at some point I get a large chunk of Canadian followers. I'd love to have a big meetup at the uh, Ontario Science Center. It's like one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. Go down there and hang out with people. Go and see cool sciencey shit. I don't really have anybody to do that with, so let's see here. So here's a nice piece of number twelve solid ground. Awesome. And we're gonna put a connector on that. Now the question is, do I need to fold this? I think I should. I might be wrong here, but let's try folding it. There we go. OK. 
Okay. Gonna really crush it there so it's nice and tight. I should be able to slip that in and solder it. Like a glove. Nice. There we go. Slaughtered grounds are the best grounds. Or CAD welds. CAD welds are pretty awesome too. There we go. So I think we got everything sorted as far as the uh, mains goes. I mean, um, yeah. Oh no, we didn't. I made a fatal mistake here. Shit, I'm going to have to cut off some heat shrink. Uh, I need to take the white and plug it into the neutral. It needs to be soldered in with the neutral. The black needs to be soldered in with the black. Shit, I screwed up. Uh, not a big deal. We'll just edit that. All right, so let's uh, pop this back off. Just means I'm going to have to waste more heat drink. I hate doing that because this stuff's not cheap. It's like 16 bucks a length. Jesus. In this economy, that's food for... Well, that's a candy bar. So Either way, you get the idea. I don't like wasting stuff. There we go. Let's see if I can get this off now. Almost got it. Ah. Darn. Hope I didn't break that. Alright, well, there's one off. This is a bloody nightmare. This is a good heat shrink, so it's not easy to get off. Ah, there we go. Heat shrink is off. There we are. Okay, now I can get this piece off here. So now what I need to do, because this is the mains in, is I need to get these inside of here. Uh, which means i got to desolder these. That sucks. There we go. Ow, ow, ow. We are going to need to rethink that. There we go. fingers. Oh, shit. What really sucks is I'm going to have to, like, fix those connectors later. Uh, I'm going to have to grab two more, though. Because, I mean, like, these ones are all full of solder. I'm going to have to wick them and clean them. Okay. So there's one. I'm going to get the other one out. It's a pain in the arse. A big old blob of solder so it uh, thermally couples. There we go. That was actually a lot easier. Actually, probably a good thing I did that anyway because it doesn't look like the uh, solder went too deep there. Well, that's better. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let's see here, is I'm going to bind these. It might actually work easier if I cut the solder off. I think I'm going to do that. There we go. So we're just going to cut the solder off of that. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now if we're lucky, I can get this. Uh, we're never lucky. We all know that. Okay. I'm going to take this neutral from the PSU. This is, again, this is all going to change shortly, which is kind of a shame. 
There we go, and then we can slide on a new fitting for it. There we go, and then we can get some hot molten solder for it. Come on, suck it in, you sucker. more and we should be good on that one. That's right, suck it in. There. She looks pretty damn good if I don't see so myself. Okay, so there's a neutral. There's some flux stuck to it. Bloody hell. Okay. And then here we go with the hot five minutes remaining on the five minutes. Yeah, I think it's five minutes remaining on. Well, that's weird. It says five minutes remaining on here. Okay. Do 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 do. Get this guy prepped up. So by doing this, the whole thing's fused together. So it means coming in is just fused. So the PSU that's currently in there and the relay pack that will be feeding all the computers and everything, that's all going to be fused. Awesome sauce, eh? Let's clean that and put a big old blob of solder on it. Is it adhering? There we go, sucking it in. This is a not an optimal way to solder, by the way, but limited length soldering iron. There's a nice big blob. Get in there. One more little blob. There we go. ID and that soldered. Ow. There we go. Okay. There we are. There's the low memory warning that I was waiting for. Alright, so the last thing we need to do before we plug all this shit in is I now need to do the same thing with the ground, which I screwed that up to. Fortunately, though, that's not a big deal because it's the ground. So what I'm going to do here for the first ground tap is I'm actually going to put the ground for the PSU on it. Here we go. Prototype. I'm also going to put some heat shrink on here. Okay, so let's get a little piece of heat shrink for that, which is over here. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to slip this heat shrink on here, and then we're going to have to dump this video and take a quick break. It's been a lot of long videos lately. I am so sorry about that, but uh, hey, if you find them too long, let me know, because uh, I'm here to teach you guys, but I also need to know how to make these videos properly. There we go. Let's do that. There we go. I should be able to hit that with some solder. I'll be good to go. Man, I'm really hoping that Galaxy S8 has a better video quality, but I guess I'll find out in editing because the first part of this video is done on it. So, that'll be cool. Alright, there we go. Put a piece of heat shrink over that. And then, that's it for this part of the segment. 
The next part I will probably do off camera is get my switch loops for my fuses and uh, get her prepped up for you guys so we can start doing some testing and fun stuff. All right, on to the next part. So this laptop here, this is my guinea pig. I pulled the battery off of it, as you can see. And uh, I'm not worried about damaging it because it's uh, kind of difficult to damage it in this situation. I mean, I know what's running here. The reason why it's my guinea pig is because I want to see if the switch time on this uh, transfer switch is fast enough to uh, make the computer run. So uh, let's see here. Um, first things first, we're going to turn off the... You know what? This isn't going to work too good. I need this over here. So you guys can see my what I'm doing because there's the power cord right there. Okay, so... um. Yes, you can still see the screen. Awesome. Ooh. Ah, great. Now I gotta. Ah, no. Now I've gotta blur that out. Or do I? Oh, you might not be able to see it. Awesome. There we go. Okay, so you can see the laptop there. So I'm gonna unplug mains first. Okay, so there's mains unplugged. Oh, you stupid thing. Hold on, let me try that again. I'm trying to keep uh, an eye on the uh, power as well. Okay. So, um, I'm going to unplug Beans first. There we go. Beans is out. Cool. Okay, plugging Beans back in. Now let us uh, turn off the inverter. Still working. Now watch the screen closely. Unplug the mains now because the inverter's off and we got no juice. Turn the inverter back on. There we go. So it looks like we have success. The switch is fast enough to actually maintain operation for devices. So uh, that's that. But, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of shit that you did not see me do because I figured that you guys are getting bored watching all the shit that I was doing. So I'm going to show you what I did. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Okay. Let's unplug this. Put it back on top of this laptop, which I repaired in a previous video. <sighs> Damn it. I really need to go cordless. Okay, so. If you look inside of here. There we go. Now you guys can see my glorious workmanship. There we go. There, that should do it. Okay, so let me adjust the camera. There we go. All right, so what we've done, um, I misplaced my heat shrink. I gotta go pick some more up anyway, but again, this is still a prototype. So what I've done here is for the fuses, as you can see, um, by the way, I use these awesome little white uh, clippies that you actually, uh, <laughs> you take your white clippies and you, um, uh, screw them into whatever surface. They have sticky backs, but the sticky backs just to get it on there. Well, that charger's really working right now. Okay, so the idea here is that um, each one of these fuses are in a switch loop. So I've got each one of the fuses set up here. They're switch looped through these leads here, back to here where they are interceptors. So what we've got here, and again, I'm going to improve this. I'm probably going to put a bus type system in here at some point, but if you look here, you'll see that... Um, the lead going up to the fuse comes off the one side of the relay. And then it goes to uh, the fuse, and then it comes back, and it plugs into the cable that goes out to its appropriate device. So that's all good. Uh, everything here is behind a 20-amp fuse. There is a 20-amp fuse. Be, uh, this is the mains fuse. So basically, um, this should all be pretty solid now. Um, if this mains fuse pops, this whole system will go down other than the batteries. So... Um, the charger here will lose power and it'll go offline and the devices will rely on the inverter until the battery uh, runs dead. So we've got all of our grounds on here. Everything's grounded. We've got our little relay pack down there in the bottom. This is the fuse for the battery charger. It's fused at 30 amps. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. So the whole concept here is the power comes in feeds this little transformer, and feeds this PSU. 
and of course it goes through that relay. So it's kind of three things, okay? So passing through the relay, uh, it's in the normally open position, and when power is applied to the relay, it closes the circuit on the normally open. So as long as that relay has power coming from this little transformer here, that relay will always close on the normally open. So your normally open is actually like pulled open by the coil on the, the attenuation coil on the uh, relay. So as soon as that loses power, it flicks back into its resting position, and its resting position is normally closed. What's connected to normally closed is the power inverter. The normally open is connected to mains, and the common is connected to the power output of that little power box up top there. By the way, I'm going to do these pilot lights in another video, because I, I've got some cooler shit I want to do this anyway when I pull this thing in and put the power converter in. So, um, yeah. The batteries are going to always be topped up by this little guy right here. Uh, I have it set to output about 13.4 uh, volts, that guy right there, because that's the float voltage is about 13.5. Full charge, when you start to boil off the sulfur crystals on a battery, is around 14.2 to 15 point. 15.4. So, you know, a good idle voltage to keep the batteries at so they don't boil down is about 13.5-ish. Uh, uh, so, but since this thing's always going to be plugged in, I just want to main maintain a decent charge because 12.8 is considered 100% uh, charge on 12 uh, volt batteries. So yeah, power coming in through the fuse, feeds this, feeds this, and then feeds the power pack. That's all there is to it. Um, of course, this is all tight. At the front here, I've got my battery meter, which is going to be changed out soon because I am going to be getting that little IP device, which will do um, reporting via SNMP or an interface that'll show me if mains has failed or if uh, the battery is low, all the little details on that. But in the meantime, this thing has heavy duty casters on it. It's got a nice heavy duty plug on it. It's 20 amp. There we go. And uh, she's ready to put the screws back in and tight lock her up. So, we're going to do that now. And I don't know where I put the screws. Um, well, they're around here somewhere. Uh, if not, I have some more wood screws that I can use. Hmm. Ah, well, whatever. You don't need to see me put screws back in it. So, I've got a piano hinge right here. That's what uh, this hinge is on. And then at the front here, there's just two deck screws that hold it shut. So that's that. So now I'm going to move this back into its corner and hook its ground lead back up. There's got a common ground that connects to the uh, negative so that uh, it's always grounded properly. And then I'm going to plug our two power bars in uh, to these two outlets and all of our computers and this whole workstation here and everything's going to be plugged into this thing. So that should run everything here in bad weather with no problems at all. And it's good timing because there's an ice storm coming in tomorrow. So I have to get a couple more batteries for this thing, which I intend to actually put two or three very large deep cycle cells in here. I mean, right now, I can run all of our computers and everything for about six hours, roughly, if we're not heavy loading it. Um, yeah, and that's enough time for me to go and pick up a generator. And I do own a couple of generators, but you know, they're actually in the shop, which is not great. So, All right, so thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like, subscribe, give me some uh, input on what you think of my videos and uh, what you would like to see. And uh, yeah, everybody have a great night. And I'll work on getting some more content out here. So we'll catch you later. Have a great night. Bye.